Hello friends of the Electrified Charging Fun and welcome to Electrified Speicher, your channel all around Skoda C Mobility. My name is Matthias and over the Easter holidays I received a lot of messages and emails from you asking me are there delivery delays and problems at Skoda because now my car should come three or four months later and do you have any information on that? And even some viewers sent me mails telling me that they got an offer from their dealer to switch from the 77 kilowatts hours battery with 175 kilowatts peak charging performance to 135 kilowatts on their L Rock, and that's what we should talk about now. So first the good news, Skoda is performing really well. They are selling cars and cars and cars in 2025. And not only Skoda, it's Volkswagen itself who is selling a lot of cars. This is basically because they have good cars, but also some global factors of the politics which are recently occur that European cars from European manufacturers are really in demand compared to other cars from other countries, for example from the US. That might differ in the UK, I know, but for continental Europe this is it. And Therefore, they sell a lot of cars. Given, I give you an example. I had an interview with Klaus Selmer, the CEO of Skoda at the end of 2024. And I asked him, will the LROC be capable of beating the, L, uh, the car rock in numbers in 2025? He was skeptical about that because he said, well, the circumstances and let's see. And here we are, three months into 2025 and we nearly sold 50,000 LROC. And what about the car rock? Well, in 2024, there were 125,000 car rocks sold. So we are really up to the game here. But with these numbers, there comes problems. And that is the demand of the 77 kilowatt hours battery with 175 kilowatts charging power. And so over the Easter holidays, I got the mails from people who ordered an ENIAC 85X, which has that battery, telling me that the delivery times are now October or even November this year instead of July, August. And yes, that car has that battery. And then it was rather directly after I received the first mails telling me that people who are interested in an L Rock 85, which has the same battery, just got told by their dealers, are you willing to switch to the 135 kilowatts battery instead of the 175? And some dealers even offered a discount for that. And then the question arises, should I? What does that mean, especially if you are new to e-mobility? And by the way, I'm connected in several forums and other platforms. Therefore, I collect all the public available information. And there are rumors that at calendar week 24, Skoda will switch permanently to the 135 kilowatts battery for the LROC 85, no longer offering the 175 kilowatts battery. And with those who ordered an LROC 85 and won't be able to get the 175 kilowatts battery, they will be uh, contacted by their dealer to find a solution. Oh, at this point I should also state this video is not done for Skoda nor is it done with Skoda. I only collect information which are publicly available and which you sent to me and bring them all together to tell you what I got. But now let's talk about the real differences between those two batteries that you know what's coming towards you. So 135 kilowatts, 175 kilowatts, what does that really mean? Well, first off, both batteries have the same, same net capacity of 77 kilowatt hours. This will not change. What changes or what is different is the maximum charging power which is possible under best conditions, optimal conditions. And to understand that, if you're completely new to e-mobility, every battery has a charging curve which starts high when the battery has a low state of charge and then will drop the more state of charge, so the fuller the battery gets. And this peak performance, this will only occur at one end and this is at the end where the battery is really low state of charge and then decline. And for our batteries, well, with 175 kilowatts battery, you get that charging power from 0% 
SOC to around 40, 42% SOC. And then you will have a harsh drop. With 135 kilowatts battery, you get that from zero to around 50 to 55%. Then you have a very gentle drop and again, charging speed continues. And this makes for in reality from 10% to 80% as Skoda states, 28 minutes of charging time. Both are equal. And this is due that the high, higher battery with 175 kilowatts peak performance drops earlier. But what does that mean when we look at everyday life? Because this is where your charging behavior kicks in. No one, especially not new to e-mobility drivers, plug in at 0% state of charge. And to get a grip on this, you can look at statistics from charging providers. They measure when you plug in, when you plug off, how long did you charge and what average charging speed did you have. And most people do not even plug in at 10%. They plug in between 20 and 30% state of charge. And then again, when you look, for example, at 25% state of charge for plugging in, well, you lose a big amount of the advantage of the 175 kilowatts battery because as you already learned, it only goes to 40%. And then it depends how long will you charge? And again, let's look at the statistics. Most people at the fast charger simply charge to 80%, even if they don't have to. And at around 63%, yeah, there are 65%, they start to get equal again. But what is the difference? Well, we can look at the charging curves. And the biggest difference between both batteries under optimal conditions when you plug in at 10% is at 42 to 43%. There, the 175 kilowatts battery has a two minute advantage over the 135 kilowatts battery when you look at the charging time. But then you have to plug off because otherwise you will lose that advantage. At around 63, 65%, there's only one minute left and then up to 70%, it equals itself out. And just keep in mind, if you plug off earlier and still have to travel, you need to go to more chargers. And more chargers mean, well, if the charger is not en route, you have to leave the route and, and then you might already lose your advantage. So in most scenarios, not looking at some edge cases, for most people, simply there is no difference or to put it even more precise, you may already have an advantage with 135 kilowatts battery over the 175 kilowatts battery. And we've done all the research here on the channel. So what I've told you now is based on data we collected and data we analyzed. So there were dozens of charging tests included. Data from you, from the community. And now there's another thing which you should keep in mind that is charging infrastructure. More often we still find chargers with 150 kilowatts charging power. So the charger may limit your charging experience. And with 135 kilowatts battery, well, you get the best charging experience. With 175 kilowatt battery, you are already limited by the charger. And keep in mind, one of the most iconic and most used chargers is the LPtronic 300 kilowatts charger. That has two charging points. And if two cars are plugged in, make it simple, power will be split. Not exactly 50-50, but let's keep it that way. And again, even at that charger, when two cars are plugged in, you have an advantage with 135 kilowatts because you get maximum power, the other battery gets limited. So in most scenarios, you will be better off with 135 kilowatts battery instead of the 175. But of course, if you want to optimize to the last percentage, this battery would be better. And now it's time to talk a bit about fundamental things around charging speed. Because sometimes I receive messages which goes like this. Hey Matthias, I know MEB platform is a 400 volt system, uh, but 175 kilowatts, this is not much when it comes to charging speed. And 135 kilowatts, this is such a small low number. This can't be, this cannot survive on the market in 2025. And I don't get this only from Elrock or ENIAC. Inter people who are interesting in these cars, you hear that from people who look for a Cupra Tavascan, even for a Kia EV3. And there's a lot of stuff in these messages. First off, 
Well, of course there are electric cars who can charge much, much higher, who have, has a higher charging peak, 200, 250, even way over 300 kilowatts. And one hint is already in those messages. It's those 400 volts. Basically, we've got an EV architecture of 400 volt and the other one 800 volts. So double the voltage. And according to the power, which is simply voltage multiplied with the current, you see where this leads. When you have the same current, an 800 volt system gets double the power. Or you can halve the current on that 800 volt system to get the same power. And the more current, the more amps you put into that, the more heat. And the more heat, the more cooling you need. And therefore those 800 volt systems have an advantage. And therefore they can charge with higher speeds. And you get cars on the market 10 to 80% in 15 minutes, 18 minutes, or even 12 minutes. But this is not the MEB platform. And we, want, we should stick with that platform because that's what we got. An LROC is on an MEB platform. So let's compare values within that platform. And within that platform, well, some would say 200 kilowatts is the maximum. That is based on the CCS standard, so the charging standard, and which goes to 500 amps. Uh, 500 multiplied with 400, 200 kilowatts. Yes, a Tesla at a supercharger can go to 250 kilowatts. That's a different story. We need to keep things tight here because we're a bit on time or we would talk forever. So is that a good value or not? 28 minutes is a good value for a 400 volt system. Yes, you could go lower. Yes, you could charge longer. But in the end, it depends how long does it take you to charge from one state of charge to the other. So average speed is what you are looking for, not peak performance. Peak performance for a small amount of time does not matter at all. And therefore, let's look at the average speed of the 135 kilowatts battery and its charging behavior. And the average speed here is around 124 to 125 kilowatts. And the same is with 175 kilowatts battery because they take the same time from 10 to 80%. And therefore, if you now look at the numbers, it's way better with 135, which can maintain its peak way longer than the other one. And what about other cars? Is that a good or is that a bad value? Well, let's take the statistics of the charging providers again. And they sorted it by model. And when you look at that, the average charging speed as of today at fast chargers is between 80 and 120 kilowatts. This is the most average values they get. Yes, this is not much. And with 124 or 125 kilowatts with an LROC, you are quite good there. So as of now, you should not complain about this. Otherwise, you have to move to an 800 volt system of another manufacturer. Summing everything up, well, it is not bad getting the 135 kilowatts battery. You should not bother about that. Especially not if Skoda will really start to build the LROC 85 only with that battery, because then it's equal to the ENIAC 85, who already only gets the 135 kilowatts battery. And this also uh, removes one disadvantage I found. If this is not officially communicated, you might have a better, uh, a, a bad experience selling the car when people ask why does your car not have 175 kilowatts charging power. But if they start producing the LROC 85 only with that battery, you won't have any problems to explain that. So there will be only a few LROC 85 with 175 kilowatts and the majority will have 135 kilowatts charging power. But if you now go with an LROC 85 with that battery of 135 kilowatts, this is not a problem at all. And I hope you liked that video and that information was helpful for you so you are not any more confused about their choice to switch the battery. And if it was helpful, well, give it a thumbs up and consider to subscribe to the channel if you're not already subscribed so you do not miss out any new content, no news and no information you might want to hear. And 
a big thanks and shout out to all my supporters. As you may know, I'm doing this full time, yet the advertising money does not make for a living. But instead of doing a nine to five job in parallel, I was able to record that video early this morning to bring you this news directly when it hits the market. And your support make this possible. So thank you very much for this. And I hope we see each other in the next video. And until then, stay full of energy.